Good morning, everyone. Or one person who's here. Glad you're here. There we go. <clears throat> morning, snow, snowball soul, and some golden head. Hey. So, welcome to St. Paul's United Church of Christ for Sunday, August 7th, 2022. Snowball Soul, that's awesome. Um, it's a few minutes before the church service. I can be in, a, in about eight minutes. I'm going to be going into the service. And... Um, then when uh, when I do that, I turn off contact or contacts, comments, and stuff like that. So you get to watch, and you can send likes, you can send diamonds, all of that stuff, all the things that you can normally do, but you can't comment once I do that. But if you have prayer requests, you can put them down now. So uh, some golden head, I'm doing great. Lost connection. Come on, let's go back. Sorry about the lost connection. Stream just paused, but look, I'm back. Doing well. And I'm doing excellent, I guess I said that. So if you have any prayer requests, why don't you put them down now in the comment section. I can add them to prayer requests during the church service today. The church service is about faith and doubt. And spoiler, the two are very connected and one does not negate the other. Yes, Benjamin Franklin, that is me. <clears throat> also George Washington. Also any old white guy from the 17 or 1800s. Blue cheese, thanks. And uh, Crybaby Skin, hello. Josh Production, how you doing? Any prayer requests, y'all? I got uh, five minutes before I'm going to head into the church service. As I said before, today is about faith and doubt, and the two are very connected. If the Bible said we are made in God's image, why is there evidence of monkey? You know, in uh, in the image of doesn't mean looks exactly like a mirror image. Um, it, uh, it has more to do with created as, uh, as, as part of something that uh, an image of a reflection, not in a mirror. And I'm not explaining it very well. Why is there evidence of monkey? Evolution is science. It occurred over time, over millions of years. The Bible is a theological book that has to do with um, people kind of wondering how did we get here and th the, the religious ways of putting that. And it's okay. It's okay to have both. It's okay to be a person of faith and a person of science at the same time. The Bible's not a science book and evolution is not a theological concept. So they both exist and they're both true. Getting doctrine from first opinions, eh? I'm not sure what that means. Do I believe my brain had any intelligent design? Um, you know, people want to uh, do the, there's no way that anything like this, this complex could happen without there being a hand in it from an intelligent design. Hey Janice, how you doing? But that's, uh, it, it, it's not necessary. Uh, evolution doesn't need a theological concept to it, so it's uh, it's all okay. Do I think that my brain had an intelligent design? I think that I'm intelligent. Not sure how it started. Come on in. Hello. Hey. Sure. Do you have a thing? Do you have a bulletin yeah. with it in there? And Hebrews, 
I have one to sixteen. You can you don't have to read all one to sixteen. I can you can do one to three and eight to sixteen. Yeah, that's what was in the right. That's what I Sunday did school. there. So, go ahead and do that I instead. Don't have any problems with me. <laughs> either way, either way, awesome. Either way. <laughs> Thanks, Gail. <clears throat> Wherever I was. Um, it's not necessary for that to happen. I think that I'm intelligent. I'm not sure how I was designed that way theologically. I would say that God created me from a scientific standpoint. I don't know how it how it happened, but it's possible that life evolves and that intellect evolves. And if there wasn't a, a, a hand in it, an intelligent design, that's okay. Intelligent design is just a fancy way of saying creationism. And I'm not a creationist. I am a, a believer in science. I think that evolution is real. But I don't even think that's controversial. Thank you. This is a, uh, a pastoral stole, also known as a scarf. We are part of the United Church of Christ. And we're an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. Of course, it's okay to be LGBTQ+. Plus. Do you think of parents who use violence to educate their children? I think they're being abusive. Be you, yeah. Is it okay to be trans? Parents think it's bad. You know what? Um, as, as we grow up, we start to realize more things about ourselves. And uh, our life is a journey of trying to figure, out, figure it out. There's no hurry to be have it all figured out when you're younger. I think be you is the best possible thing. If... Uh, if you're a grown-up and you're trans, okay. If you're younger and you're trans, that's okay too. But it's also, there's no hurry to, to know it all. So relax, be you all the way through. And being kicked out by your parents for that is terrible. Is it normal that my church is making an LGBT class for kids and they're forcing us to join the leave? I don't. I don't know what you mean. Nobody forces anyone to be LGBT. Um, but are you saying that uh, in church that you need to go and learn about uh, like things like uh, what's the the uh, the class that uh, I can't remember the curriculum, but it's not an LGBT class. It's a class on human sexuality that is. Uh, you know, it's uh, age appropriate for any age, depending on they teach what it is there. If I heard about Addison Ray bikini situation, no, I don't know anything about the Addison Ray bikini situation. I think people can wear what they want, though. Violence is abusive. That's what it is. And uh, right and wrong, violence is wrong, pure and simple. If your parent uses violence against you, it's abusive. Our church is teaching that it's wrong and using the Bible to say it's wrong. And, um, hey, if, if your church is making you go to that or leave... Can you leave? Because that's uh, using the Bible that way. I know people do it. It's another thing that's abusive. It harms the cause of Christ. It harms people to say that. So we just have to stop doing it. Did I know? Okay, I, hey, I got to head into the church service. Do I know what country is first to adopt Christianity as a state religion? No, I don't. Well, there's, I got to turn off the, uh, I'm glad you're all here. I got to turn off the comments because it's time for me to go in. And, uh, wow, some of y'all, knock it off. The rest of y'all, you're awesome. Okay, it's time for church. Here we go. What do you think? Dapper.
Hey, Kev. Yeah. Right? Hi, Rivers. See you today. But glad you're here.
Good morning, everyone. Happy August 7th. Do you know what August 7th is? It's my mom's birthday. She's not here today because she's in Florida, but she's 84 today. So just uh, send her happy birthday vibes right now, wherever, wherever you are, so that she feels that they're, uh, they're attending King's Trail Community Church in, I think, Frostproof or something in Florida, somewhere around there. <laughs> Anyway, so glad that you're here today. It is about faith and doubt today. I have faith that our letter just will start. Please join me in the. You have a mic, Thank you. Please join me in the call to worship. God is here today. Are we Are ready? We ready? God challenges us to be faithful in ministries of peace and hope. Are we Are ready? ready? Let's praise God who calls us to serve by helping others. Praise, praise to God, God who has given us hope and peace. It's time for church. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for this day, the beginning of August. Summer begins to wane as we begin to gear up for the fall, as we search our hearts, minds, our souls, and seek to continue to be the church, to be loved and kindness always. We thank you for being here with us today. We bless you, O oh God. Please bless us. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Ready to pass the peace? A wave, a high, an air five, a handshake if you want to, and you know it's time to end passing the peace when the music starts.
announcements today? Well, no. You're not doing announcements, you're ready to do special music, okay.
Bible reading this morning is from the uh, book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1 to 16. It can be found on page 977 of the Bible. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain's. Through this, he received approval as righteous, God himself giving approval to his gifts. He died, but through his faith he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not experience death, and he was not found because God had taken him. For it was attested before he was taken away that he had pleased God. And without faith it is impossible to please God, for whoever would approach him must believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, warned by God about events as yet unseen, respected the warning, and built an ark to save his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir to the righteousness that is in accordance with faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren. Because he considered him faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as innumerable, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had an opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of God for God's people. Praise God. Today's reading praises the faith of Abraham and Sarah and others in there. And it describes right at the beginning faith as the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. I have also heard faith described as believing without seeing. The belief or trust that something is true. Or taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Remember that's from Martin Luther King Jr. But all too often I have doubts that are bigger than what I believe. So the question is, do the bigger doubts negate faith? Let's take a look at where faith comes from. From Galatians 5, 22 and 23. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. 1 Corinthians 13, 2. And if I have prophetic powers, and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I have nothing. Same chapter, verse 13. And now faith, 
Hope and love abide these three, and the greatest of these is love. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of work, so that no one may boast. Ephesians 2, 8 from the good, or God's word translation says this. God saved you through faith as an act of kindness. You had nothing to do with it. Being saved is a gift from God. Bible scholars aren't on, of one mind on this one, but let's view all of this through that lens of the meta narrative of the Bible. Remember, God creates, we mess up. God does something good, we mess up. We're really good at our part. God is really good at God's part. Grace is a gift of God. Hope is a gift of God. Love is a gift of God. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, gentleness, and self-control are all gifts of God. Faith is a gift of God. Each of these gifts has an element of receiving them and giving them. We receive grace. We offer or act with grace. We receive hope. We offer or act with hope. We receive love. We offer or act with love. We receive joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, gentleness, and self-control. We offer or act with joy, peace, patience, Kindness, generosity, gentleness, and self-control. These gifts are given by God. Whether we ever put them into action. And so, by faith, given to us as a gift of God, we act with faith. We have it. We do it. We can't negate it because it is of God. God doesn't negate it. We have it. And when we doubt, faith cannot be negated. Let me take it one step further. Doubt is necessary for us to exercise faith. Doubt and faith must exist together. See, when we don't know something for sure, faith makes it possible for us to keep going. When we doubt, faith helps us to believe through the doubt. If we didn't doubt, there wouldn't be any need to exercise faith. Listen to these thoughts. Faith without doubt isn't faith at all. It's certainty. You've heard me say that before, and it comes from Anne Lamont. Or how about faith without doubt isn't faith at all. It's indifference. Believe as though. If you don't know for sure, there's no need for faith. If you don't care, there's no need for faith. When you doubt, faith is what keeps you seeking. I love the words of Gibran. Doubt is a pain too lonely to know that faith is his twin brother. They need each other. Time out for a little commercial. In the video version of the sermon right here, I, if you ever watch the videos of, the, of the, the whole services, they're, you know, they have transitions and in between things there are little dissolves and titles and stuff. And the, the titles and all of the special effects that go on there are made so that you re really don't notice them. You know, like the transitions don't draw attention to themselves or anything like that. They're just kind of there. Well, in this part of the sermon, in the video part, and I encourage you to watch it, I use special effects simply just color and black and white to denote two different ideas or thoughts going on. That's all I'm going to say. Now you're going to know what it is, but go back and watch the video version of the service so you can understand further. In the United Church of Christ, we have a statement of faith it's not a litmus test of what you have to be sure of in order to be a member. It's a testimony. So let me share with you the UCC statement of faith with some new doubt statements included. I believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our God, and to your deeds I testify. 
I often wonder if you even exist. I wonder why you let such awful things happen in the world. I wonder if you even care. But you call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. Scientists and religious folk argue too much about things like creation and evolution. But you could simply tell everyone that the Bible isn't a science book and that you make us as people who can think and discover and even create because you seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. I make mistakes all the time. Most everyone I know, no, everyone I know makes mistakes all the time. Why do you let that happen? Do you really? You judge people and nations by your righteous will declared through prophets and apostles. I try not to look down on people who do things differently than I do or who hold different opinions than I do, but sometimes people act so awful. It's hard to trust that in Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. Do you really know what it's like for us here? Can you feel pain? Have you experienced failure? Have you ever been completely devastated? You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenants, faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. I really wish I knew you were near all the time. I wish I knew that you were always doing the things that I say you do, redeeming us as we continually mess up. You call us into your church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. Couldn't you just do it all? Can't you fix everything? Why don't you? You promise to all who trust you, forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. I don't know if I have the faith, the strength, the persistence, or even the love to follow you. How shall we continue to live in God's promise? Amen.
you can give the way that works best for you. One of the ways is in the offering plate. So however you give, I encourage you to be generous to the ministries of St. Paul's United Church of Christ because we are in all of this together. This morning's tithes and offerings will now be received.
We're just going to do it that way. Okay? On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples. And during the meal, he took bread and he broke it. He gave thanks and he said, Take and eat this out of you. This is my body given for you. In the same manner, he poured a cup. He gave thanks and he said, Take and drink this out of you. This is a cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. Drink it in memory of me. We learn from Scripture that as often as we eat the bread, as often as we drink from the cup, we remember and celebrate Jesus' death and resurrection until he shall come again. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for these elements, for your community gathered however we have gathered. We pray that we consecrate elements that we have here today, consecrate elements that people may have at home today. Bless us and consecrate us to your service. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Christ's body was broken for you. Take and eat. Christ's blood was shed for you and for all. Take and drink. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for these common elements in this extraordinary meal. Thank you for common spaces, extraordinary presence. Thank you for something as common as love one another and the extraordinary impact it has on the world. Thank you, God, for all of this. We pray in Jesus' name. No. We come to a time of prayer, and what well, we are celebrating with the rosebud on the altar, and we had a celebration last week during the, the happy money, but Shay Laura is here, not here, but Shay Laura is here in the world, so congratulations to Grandmother Laura, namesake, middle name Laura. Wondering if Shay will be called Shay or Laura, depending on how it works out, right? We're celebrating with you. We also, we pray for peace, strength, persistence, and recovery efforts in Kentucky. So many places on the globe. There was something else that I read just this morning. I can't remember. It, it seems as though there is devastation, natural devastation, and violence-related things always. Just because it feels overwhelming it doesn't mean it's not present. Just because we don't hear it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Just because maybe we can't do anything directly right away. It doesn't free us from the call to be the church, to be a beacon of hope, justice, and peace, to be a people of prayer and action, to truly be a caring community of Christ. So in our prayers, let us pray that we would continue to do that. Let us pray for peace. Let us pray in celebration. Let us pray in anger. Let us pray in doubt and in faith together. Let's spend some time in silent prayer. Then I'll say a short pastoral prayer, and then we can say our Lord's Prayer. God of love and of justice, God of forgiveness and mercy, 
God, who calls us to continue to be the church. Thank you for hearing our prayers this day. We pray in celebration. We pray in anguish. We pray in hope. We pray in hopelessness. We pray in faith. We pray in doubt. We pray. Thank you for hearing our prayers, O God. We lift them in the name of Jesus, our Savior, who taught us the prayer we could say together. O oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'll start, you know, I'll say the benediction as you get ready. It's all good. It's all good. Benediction. This is Benedictus. It comes from Latin. It means good word. In our benedictions, they are good words. And you've noticed that over the last three years, I'm accustomed to saying that good Irish blessing. In the history of St. Paul's other blessings have been uh, Reverend Beiser passed away a couple of years ago and his wife. Linda recently used to use the one, may the Lord bless and keep you, make his face shine upon you and give you rest. And the Irish blessing, I don't know what Phil did. Do you remember Phil's standard benediction? Go in peace, and may the peace of Christ go with you. Amen. On page two of this hymn, it says, uh, men go first, women go second. We're just going to do a call and response. So, men, join the women on the response. I thought that was the drummer. trouble today. Anyway, hope uh, hope you enjoyed the service. Glad you stuck around. And we'll see you again next week. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.